We are alive, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Actually, this video shouldn't be for children of any age. Uh, well, you got to keep careful with the how you uh, talk to your children if you do about what's happening in the church because you do not want to scandalize the little ones. I've got my nieces and nephews and I'm really, really, really careful of what I say in front of them because I don't want them their little minds will maybe lose the faith or think everything is bad. So you don't want to scandalize the little ones, even if what you say is absolutely true. Anyways, so this video we're talking about here today, a bishop from Peru, and he basically rejects totally and completely the uh, latest document from Pope Francis, through issued through his puppet Tucho Fernandez of the Dicastery for the Destruction of the Faith uh, regarding the blessing of those who are living in objective moral evil, in ab objective sin, who have zero intent of changing their lives or repenting or none of that. They just want to come in front of the priest, receive the blessing as couples basically confirming them in their sins you know as they says st paul st paul i think said in the last days they will search for teachers uh to tickle their ears with itching ears they want to get somebody who's going to tell them what they want to hear they don't want to hear the truth they want to hear what they want to hear because that makes them feel good all right so uh, let's get into this video and uh, this is the bishop here actually it's a picture of him with his uh <clears throat> his uh, uh, clergy and his priests, and this is off of his own um, official Prelatura de Moyamba, Moyobamba, Moyobamba in uh, in Peru, and um, that is him with his uh, uh, clergy, and uh, this is his um, declaration in Spanish of his um, beliefs regarding Fudu, uh, the la latest document of Tucho Fernandez about. Uh, blessing SS couples and those living in, in fornication and adultery. Um, but, you know, that's basically him. And uh, you see his picture in my background there. <clears throat> and um, why, why is this uh, person so not liked by Francis? Well, we're going to have a little picture. Actually, there's apparently in the uh, Synod of 2019, I don't know what the synod that was, whether it's Amazon synod or one of them, one of the many of Francis's various synods. Before we get into the actual article, before we get into the actual um, description, here's what he has to say. Um, let's see if we can show you here and with audio, and I will actually shut up, which is very hard, as you, as you can might tell, actually, but here we go. Let's see if the audio is on. Oh, let me turn on the audio, please. Yo he hecho en el sínodo ha sido una propuesta de de evangelización, de profunda evangelización de un anuncio Basically, de Jesucristo, que es Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I didn't even show it to you. A través de la predicación, oh, de la enseñanza, de la caridad. Here we go. Dar a conocer. Oh, I'll, I'll just start from the beginning. Basically, he's preaching about true evangelization, not fake evangelization of Francis. Pues de, de la salvación que solamente nos viene a través de, de Jesucristo. All right, so now you know why this bishop would probably not be on the uh, acceptable uh, type of bishops, uh, Francis, uh, the Argentine Jesuit, as uh, Vigano calls him. Uh, the resident of Santa Marta would approve of because he uh, he is talking about true evangelization, 
true preaching the gospel, true converting people. But for Francis, this is proselytism, and it it is against the dignity of man. So uh, it's better to leave people in their paganism and in their sin than convert them to the true faith. Um, that is the problem with this type of bishop uh, for Francis. So, and uh, this is the article, and let me share the tab here so you can see. Uh, this is basically the full article, uh, published a full translation of the article, published on um, Rorati Celli. And uh, people might say, oh man, why are you people so hung up on this article, on this document on, of Tucho, the uh, writer of uh, pornographic novels uh, of the Vatican, of the Dicastery for the Destruction of the Faith. Well, uh, because, because um, as the National Catholic Reporter, as the National Catholic Reporter itself said when this document came out, that the Vatican document, document represents Pope Francis's pastoral revolution. Revolution, revolution for gay Catholics, meaning Catholics who commit unnatural sexual acts and want to continue doing so. And why is it a revolution? Because in paragraph 25, as it shows you here, I hope you can see it, yep. Yeah. There you go. It, is, it specifically says, an exhaustive moral analysis should not be placed as a precondition for conferring a blessing. The paragraph says that the church must avoid resting in its pastoral praxis, meaning practice, how it does, does things, on the fixed nature of certain doctrinal or disciplinary schemes. So we've got doctrinal schemes, disciplinary schemes, as if doctrine and discipline are just invented stuff. And it says here in National Catholic Reporter, which is a liberal, basically modernist uh, paper, uh, paragraph uh, approved by Rome, of course, paragraph 25 is revolutionary because it overturns the dominant pastoral approach the Catholic Church has taken over the centuries. And that is the problem with this document. Uh, and it's not coming from radical traditionalists or anything like that. It is actually coming from the National Catholic Reporter. Uh, so, now let's get into the actual... Um, the actual, uh, what do you call it? Where did it go? I hope I didn't close that screen by error. Oh man, I think I did. I think I did. Oh. Oh no, I didn't. Oh, I got scared there for a second. I got scared for a second. Let's uh, put it up for you guys to see. So let's go full screen for a second. Here it is. This document damages the communion, that's what the bishop is saying, of the church for such blessings directly and seriously contradict divine revelation. And he actually adds in the actual text and the doctrine of the church and the practice of the church. So obviously it is not Catholic, it is actually anti-Catholic and being the contradicting divine revelation makes it heretical, even though the bishop does not say these words uh, this word specifically. So this is Bishop Rafael Escudero Lopez Bria of uh, Peru. And so um, let's go over this um, letter here. Uh, and, and we're going to continue and, and you're going to see what the problem is again of Tucho Fernandez. Tucho Fernandez, of course, said nobody. Nobody can reject that um, that letter. Why? Why? Because, of course, he's a genius. And uh, he said, uh, you know, he's the head of the Congregation for the Destruction of the Faith. And he says that this, um, his novelty, which has 
tons of bishops in uproar throughout the world, especially in Africa and Eastern Europe and in other parts. He claims that it remains vital that these in his in his apologia for his letter, in his his press release defending his and Francis's a fully approved heretical novelty. It remains vital that these Episcopal conferences do not support a doctrine different from that of the declaration signed by the Pope. So when, because it's signed by the so-called Pope, it is infallible. It is divinely revealed. Given that it is a perennial doctrine, meaning it is constant 2000 year old doctrine of the church so why is there an uproar if it is perennial doctrine so he tells them oh you gotta you know study it more and you know until you get the and you study and study and study until you reach the same conclusions as we tell you it is so of course it is not perennial doctrine because if it was perennial doctrine if it were perennial doctrine it would not have caused any controversy all right, so, and uh, let's go through this letter, and I'm going to show you at the end of it that this is not something new, that this has been building, building, building up, up to we reach that stage, and the next stage, of course, will be the, uh, like, this is the blessing of, uh, of irregular couples and SS couples, and uh, without them confirming or making it equal to the dignity of marriage as a sacrament. So what's coming up next is, as was declared in the Amazon Synod document, is uh, the diaconal ordination of women, making women deaconesses. And of course, women deaconesses in, in the past were basically like widowed nuns. That's what it is. They help the women. They were not part of the clergy as the Council of Nicaea, in 325 declared that these so-called deaconesses do not lay, receive the laying of hands and are, are in all respects to be considered part of the laity. So for them to do studies and studies about the deaconesses in the early church, well, we have the early church, Council of Nicaea itself, an ecumenical council, declaring that deaconesses were never ordained, are not part of the clergy, are all part of the laity. So what's the deal? Um, so... What he's gonna, what they're gonna have to do, what they will do, because they talked recently about, oh no no, they can't be ordained as, as the old style deacons. Well, <laughs> so, which means there's a new style deacons coming up. So they will be like, oh yeah, these are now deaconesses, and they're gonna receive a right of or uh, uh, consecration as deaconesses. But it is not to be confused with deacons, you know, as part of the clergy. That's what's going to come up. Like this one is, oh, this is uh, blessings, but it's not to be confused with marriage. Oh, the same little story. And of course, Francis did, uh, did do the innovation of installing women into the ministries of lector and acolyte, which were always reserved for men, in accordance with the fulfillment of the, of the direction of the Amazon Synod final document. People have to go back and read that thing. I've got a video on it. You should watch it. Anyways, so let's get into the actual document here, and um, and uh, we'll discuss it a bit further. Other things relating to it. So let's go into the actual pastoral message of of the bishop prelate of Moya Bamba of the dec on the Declaration Fiducia Supplicans. Published by the Dicastery for the Destruction of the Faith, December 28th, uh, December 18th, 2023. Dear priests, consecrated religious and lay faithful, grace and peace for the nativity of our Lord, of the Lord. Faced with the unprecedented bewilderment provoked by fiducia supplicants in the clergy and faith, many of the faithful. So this document created unprecedented bewilderment in the clergy and the faithful of his diocese, of his prelature, and in so many places in the Catholic world. I have taken a few days of prayer and reflection to respond calmly and serenely. The declaration allows the possibility of blessing. So now he's quoting the actual declaration. You can see the, the uh, 
the quotation marks, the possibility of blessing couples, not individuals coming, asking, God, help me, please give me a blessing, give me the ability to live a good Christian life. No, no, no. This is the possibility of blessing couples in their sin, flaunting their sinfulness in front of the priest to be given a, a blessing, meaning the divine blessing. They want the, God to bless their relationship as couples this is the problem. In irregular situations at same-sex couples, that's number 31. And then here then, and in a very confusing way, insists that such blessings are done without officially validating their status or changing in any way the church's perennial teaching on marriage, which is what they're going to do on deaconesses too. Making it clear that marriage is the stable union of male and female blessed by the sacrament. Now, what does the bishop have to say to this? This document damages the communion of the church. Now, I'm going to tell you, because my previous video on Cardinal Giralanda, about uh, which he wrote in 2013, now he was made a cardinal by, by Francis. He talks about when communion is broken because of the Pope not upholding the constant teaching of the church. Actually, maybe I'll just show it to you now. And then we can get back to the article. Here is, which you can go watch the whole video. It's a two-hour video or an hour and a half or something. Cessation of the office of the Roman Pontiff. When, well, how does the Paul Pope falls from the papacy? Assuming Francis was ever truly even Pope. You know, we can... Uh, Let's see what, what is the condition of this termination of the cessation of the office. And one, and he goes into, I'm not going to go through it again because I did a whole video on it, the previous real video. Then, if the Roman pontiff did not express, express what is already contained in the church, in the church, he, meaning the doctrine, he would no longer be in communion, so he breaks communion with the whole church, and therefore with the other bishops. So he breaks communion with the other bishops, successors of the apostles. And when where this is no where this no longer exists, meaning this communion no longer exists. Um, where are we here? Oh man, all these uh, live chat, live thingies are still getting used to it. I'm gonna just go <laughs> show you the again. This is I, I didn't put it on the screen. Sorry about that. Anyway, secession from the Roman off Roman secession of the office of the Roman Pontiff. So I'm gonna, not gonna read it again, but I'm gonna just go back down to where it says here the quotation, which I'm related to what the bishop just mentioned uh, that it breaks communion then if the roman pontiff did not express what the what is already contained in the church he would no longer be in communion with the whole church and therefore with the other bishops successors of the apostles where this is no where this communion no longer exists on the part of the pope because he does not hold on to what is contained in the doctrine of the church, he would no longer have any power. Why? Because he would lose his primatial office. He would fall from the papacy. So when, when the bishop here talks about damages the communion, he talks about damages, well, let me put it back up here. When he, when the bishop talks, a bishop from um, um, Peru talks about this damaging to the communion, that should remind you of what Cardinal Geralanda just stated that when a pope departs or does not hold to what has always been taught, he he destroys his communion. He damages the communion. He is no longer in communion with the church or with the bishops, and thus he falls from office. He is no longer pope. That's, of course, assuming Francis was ever Pope and not Benedict, who kept the papal name, the papal residence in the Vatican, the papal garb, the, garb, the white cassock, 
um, the uh, he uh, conferred the papal blessing, the apostolic blessing. Blessing. He signed his name to any letter he sent as Benedict the Sixteenth PP until the day he died. He was buried as Pope. He was buried in the in the tomb of Pope John Paul II. So, anyways, watch the previous video for a kind of a, a further details. So let's get into this uh, finishing this document. So this document damages the communion of the church. But who signed the document? Pope Francis. For such, as, as Tucho Ferdinand, as I just said, talking about the perennial document approved and <laughs> delivered by Francis. For such blessings, for such blessings, directly and seriously contradict divine revelation and the uninterrupted doctrine and practice of the Catholic Church, including the recent magisterium of Pope Francis. Now here he is trying to be nice, including the recent magisterium of Pope Francis. And why am I saying he's trying to be nice? Because there was a document just recently which banned the blessing of same-sex couples. Uh, but <laughs> should I get into it? Well, let's finish the paragraph and then we're gonna get I'm gonna explain this for a second. All right, which is which is why there there are no citations in the entire declaration that rely on the previous magisterium. As actually every single document of Francis, there are no citations of any authority other than himself. He always cites his own documents. <laughs> For the most part, 99%, 95% of the time, it is his, he is quoting himself as authority. Oh, look at my, you know, Laudato Si and look at my whatever. So this is how it is. And uh, in his, it's 21, oh, this is, so this is where it is. In its 2021 resp response from the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, which the Holy Father's rubrics told us, but it was the congregation, the church does not have, nor can she have, nor can she have the power to bless same-sex unions. Of course, they might say, well, this is not, we're not blessing the union, we're just blessing the couple in the union. <laughs> so they can always, they can always, you know, uh, obfusc obfuscate, is that the word? Anyways, whatever, you, know, you understand what I'm talking. So, but what happened actually uh, to the, uh, uh, before we continue with the with the article, um, what happened to the to the uh, the author of this document, which actually uh, uh, banned the blessing of same sex unions because it said that the church does not cannot do that; it cannot bless evil, and it has no power to do that. It just can't. But of course. Let us see what actually happened. Let's we'll see what actually happened. So when this document came out, again, the national, the trustworthy National Catholic Reporter, the voice of Francis and the modernists in the church, Francis replaces Cardinal Mueller. First of all, he replaced Cardinal Mueller because he's, you watch Cardinal Mueller, Mueller these days. He's just been hammering and hammering and hammering. With the with with Deputy Ladaria as head of the congregation, doctrinal congregation. So, so Francis removed Mueller, replaced him with with Ladaria as the head of the congregation for the doctrine of the faith, and because he thought, okay, this guy will do my will. Because Mueller apparently is just too stubborn, as too he's just a stubborn German, and he will not do what I tell him to do. But then, of course came the um, came the document which is cited by by the bishop banning the blessing of ss couples as they say and what did how did our beloved merciful uh, holy fathers react pope francis removes from vatican doctrine office Archbishop Ladaria, who we just saw, who is believed to have banned same-sex blessings. So Francis says, you did what? You are actually upholding the perennial teaching of the church? You're out of there. You're out of here. Go away. Go away, man. You don't listen to me. I'm, I'm the God. I'm the walking God here. So, 
And then he named Giacomo Morandi, and he too as well was removed. And of course, Pope Francis, using the term Pope loosely, what did he want? He needs to do what he wants to do, because he's the dictator Pope, as they say. So, so he got rid of that guy. First, he got rid of Mueller, got rid of Ladaria, put in the secretary, got rid of that side. Now, again, our trustworthy national Catholic reporter tells us Pope Francis' new doctrinal chief signals enormous change for the Catholic Church. Uh, weren't they right? I mean, you can't just keep on bashing the national Catholic reporter because they were right. So here is our most beloved Tucho, uh, I Heal You With My Kiss and My Mystical Passion book, uh, Fernandez, who uh, relation to God is always related to the sexual act, especially the climax of it. As, you know, if you watch any of the YouTube channels these days, last yesterday with his new revelation of his book he wrote. So, it tells you it is a revolution is coming with Tucho Fernandez. And these changes, Mueller gone. So Mueller gone. Uh, replaced with Ladaria. Ladaria comes in and gives him, because does the, the document on, no, the church can't possibly do that. Bless SS unions. Impossible. He gets out. Uh, his secretary is put in there. Again, I did it on a previous video. I remember the secretary himself upholds basically the same teaching. He gets out of there. Francis finds his buddy, his Argentine buddy Jesuit, Fernandez, and installs him there. So, and Fernandez does exactly what Francis wants. They are both birds of a feather flock together. Birds of a feather flock together. They have the same doctrine. They have the same faith. They have the same immorality. Uh, so, of course, so now we can just say, oh, two chose document, two chose, and poor Francis, he didn't do anything. No, 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 he chose them. He, he, des he decided who's who, and who's coming, and who's going, and who can stay, and who can't stay. Because you do my will, you stay. You don't do my will, you're out of there. And, um, and, uh, okay, let's get back to the, let's get back to the article here. Uh, all right, so back to the article of the bishop. Uh, all right, so we did that. So this the <laughs> breaks communion. It's against divine revelation, against the uninterrupted doctrine and practice of the Catholic Church. So what more do you need to say? Blessing, he continues, the bishop continues, blessing couples. Blessing couples in irregular situation, meaning people living in objective moral sin, whether in um, unmarried living together or divorced and living with a second civilly, uh, civilly remarried, so meaning in, uh, a, still in committing and living in an adulterous situation, uh, or again in, in same-sex couples, is so be a blessing couples in these situations is a grave abuse of the most holy name of God. So it's an abuse of the holy name of God because this is a blessing. You're, you're imparting the divine, the blessing. So you're saying God approves of your relationship as a couple. So this is an abuse of the name of God, which is invoked over objectively sinful union of fornication, adultery, or even worse, homosexual activity. Moreover, in the latter case, it must be emphasized that, again, he goes to catechism of the Catholic Church, which, of course, maybe Francis was like, you know, I don't like this part of the catechism. I'm going to remove it. I'm going to change it, which is, there is a push for that. There is a push for changing the catechism on this point. As Jorge Bergoglio decided he's smarter than God, he's smarter than the Old Testament and New Testament and all of Catholic tradition, and he declared that the, that the um, that capital punishment is against the gospel, is not Christian, is not allowed in any case. And he changed the catechism at that, this point to fit his novel heretical doctrine. Because if God 
command something, you can't say it is against morality. You are not. God is the author of morality, not you, Jorge. So uh, the Catechism number 2357 declares that these acts are disordered and contra above all contrary to the natural law. That would be, of course, considered very unloving and unopen to the love of good. All right. Uh, and the bishop continues, God never blesses sin. God never blesses sin. To bless somebody says, you know, uh, you know, uh, blessing is, has got multiple meanings, including to make something fruitful and grow more. Uh, so anyways, God never blesses sin. God does not God does not contradict himself. Well, unless you are the God of Muhammad and of Islam, then you can contradict yourself at any time for any reason and um, nobody can say why. Um, and we're going to get to the comments later on when, when I'm done here. All right. Uh, God does not lie to us. Remember the... Um, I be, uh, the um, so God does not lie, and he cannot lie because he is truth. God, who is all, who always loves the sinner unconditionally, as long as the sinner has a will to repent and to change, not somebody who spits in his face, for this very reason, seeks his repentance, his conversion, and his life. God desires good for all of us. Now, he continues, the present declaration distinguishes between, so, so this is a fake distinction. Oh, it's a liturgical blessings and pastoral blessings. So that's what they're going to do when it comes to deaconesses. Oh, this is not a liturgical office. This is a non-liturgical deaconesses, uh, con, uh, 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 I don't want to say ordination, but maybe giving of the ministry of of deaconesses is special we're restoring the church of the past which is of course a total total lie because that's all they can do is they can lie um so so they do this 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 fake distinction this fake fraud okay the present distinction between liturgical blessings and pastoral blessings and allows us to bless couples that's the big problem but not their unions. Or how come? Is, how is this possible? Even well, they're come presenting themselves as couples because of the union which it exists between them, with pastoral blessings. Okay, we we're blessing you in your sin. So keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on doing what you're doing because God loves you. It doesn't matter. Uh, this distinction leaves us perplexed and confused, for the act of blessing whether performed in a liturgical assembly or in private, imparted a minister, imparted by a minister, is still a blessing. But I guess that's too complicated to understand. It is still a blessing of the same nature. To bless a couple is to bless the union that exists between them. Again, let me repeat. To bless a couple is to bless the union that exists between them. That's what makes them a couple. There is no logical, real way to separate one thing from the other. Why else would they ask for a blessing together and not two separately? Ah, mystery of mysteries. I have no idea. Um, the underlying problem is much more serious. Much more serious. Uh, as it is that not a few brothers in the episcopate, meaning bishops and priests, not a, not a few, contravening the objective morality of sacred scripture and sacred tradition, the objective morality of sacred scripture and sacred tradition have long been confusing the, have long been so it's not a new thing. It's been going on for a while. Confusing the people of God with indiscriminate blessing of these objectively disordered and therefore sinful unions incurring a horrendous sacrilege because they're using the sacred name of God. They're using God who is the author of the blessing to bless objectively sinful unions. 
So that's the problem. Um, it's almost over this letter, and then we're going to go for a few little uh, reminders, um, recollections people might have forgotten. This didn't pop out of nowhere. Given, given the lack of clarity of the document, we must follow the uninterrupted praxis, meaning the practice of the church to date, which actually should go for everything. If uh, an act is novel, a doctrine is novel, uh, well, we should, as St. Saint, Saint of Lawrence says, we must follow the uninterrupted practice, praxis of the church to date and doctrine, which is to bless every person who asks for a blessing and not SS couples or those in an irregular situation, immoral situation, a sinful situation. We will avoid all scandal, confusion, inducement to sin. Because when you start blessing couples in these situations, you are inducing others to enter into these unions. And at the same time, we will continue to show mercy that the church has always, the church has always shown to every sinner. We cannot tell them you're not sinning, you're living in a loving relationship. No. We who approaches her, above all, offering him conversion, forgiveness, and the life of grace and eternal life. Now, yeah, it's pretty much done here. Uh, all right. Every sincerely, let's see here. Yeah, that's it. Okay, I'm going to, let's, let's finish up. And then we're going to, oh, as I said, there's a few little things I want to finish up with. Every sincerely repentant sinner, repentant sinner, with the first firm intention to stop sinning and to put an end to their public sinful situation, as, for example, living together outside of the canonically valid marriage or SS union, can receive a blessing and even better, sacramental absolution and holy communion. Dear priests and lay faithful, let us not, let us not minimize the destructive and short range, or maybe actually, maybe this is an automatic translation, maybe a long, uh, long range, like immediate consequences resulting from this effort made by some church hierarchs, some church hierarchs, who? Tucho Fernandez and his boss, Jorge Bergoglio, or the Bishop dressed in white, the Argentine Jesuit living at the hotel in Vatican City, Santa Marta, because he's not worthy to live in the papal palace, um, to legitimize such blessings. And in some cases, with good intentions, and in others, and not a few, have been manifesting with the intention of destroying the sacred deposit of the church's tradition. With the intention of destroying the sacred deposit of the church's tradition. Or as Tucho Fernandez and Francis say, oh, these are doctrinal, what did you say? Schemes, doctrinal schemes. Well, oh, churches, it's a doctrine, it's a doctrinal scheme. On the day of my Episcopal ordina ordination, I solemnly swore what? To preserve the deposit of faith in purity and integrity, in a, and this is a quotation, in accordance with the tradition always and everywhere observed in the church since the time of the apostles, which is the doctrine of St. Vincent of Lerns, which is the per perennial doctrine of the church, not the novelties of Jorge and Tucho. Therefore, I admonish the priests of the prelature of Moyobamba not to perform any form of blessing of couples in an irregular situation or the SS couples. Since God does not want the death of a sinner but his conversion to eternal life, I cordially and paternally recommend and exhort those persons who feel attraction to the same sex to live in a, uh, or live in a irregular situation to approach Christ through prayer, listening to the word, fasting, penance, and the help of the Virgin with a view to their conversion and to take advantage of the opportunity of conversion that God offers them for a happier life and the attainment of eternal life. 
this is the 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 the, 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 the what do you call it the uh, um the path listening to the word meaning reading scripture fasting penance and asking mary the all pure one to help them um, likewise i exhort the priests and faithful of the prelature to continue to cultivate their f okay now here ah, it's kind of hard he has to say it after this basically declaration that this document and its authors and pushers are heretics because it's a heretical document because it contradicts divine revelation it contradicts the doctrine of the church it contradicts the practice of the church what else is it other than heresy but he has to say this i guess to appease the dictator and, and lord the bishop dressed in white the crazy jesuit argentine living at a hotel uh, not to come down and send him in apostolic visitation to examine his 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 uh, diocese you know we need to cultivate filial union with the present pontiff assuming he's still pontiff or ever was pontiff of the holy church of god pope francis those who preceded him a rat benedict all the six Pius the twelfth, Pius the tenth, Pius the fifth, whatever. Boniface, those who preceded him. So he's not the, just the, the ultimate oracle of God, Francis. So whatever is past is garbage, and we don't care what's gonna come. No, 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 no. He's just one in a line. But we have to keep in mind of those who preceded him and those who will come. So he's saying. God remove this idiot from the throne so we can actually have somebody who's sane. It is this, and as I showed you, if, if it is a heretical document and if the Pope break, is damaging the communion, according to Cardinal Giralanda, he breaks, breaks communion with the bishops and he falls from office because he's, Francis, you can't claim ignorance. He was professor of theology, a professor of, of philosophy. He was the head of Catholic University in Argentina, head of the Episcopal Conference of Argentina. You cannot complain, well, you know, this is material heresy. He doesn't understand. He doesn't know. No, no, he knows. He knows very well, and he rejects the truth. It is this communion that moves me to, un to undersign this present letter. With my affection and blessing, Rafael Escu Escudero Lopez Bria, Bishop Prelate of Moyobamba, in January 2nd, 2024, Memorial of the Holy Bishops and Dr. Saints Basil, Basil, and Gregory. So this is what the, the bishop had to say, which is absolutely true. Now, uh, people think, oh man, when did this, like, isn't this kind of out of nowhere? Uh, if you weren't following church events since... Jorge took 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 office in 2013. You probably wouldn't would be surprised, but do you recall, friends, friends? Do you recall the "Who am I to judge?" comment of Jorge when they asked him about uh, homosexual clergy? He said, "Well, you know, it's like who am I to judge? Who am I? I'm supposed to be the Pope, the Vicar of Christ, the successor of Peter, the upholder of tradition." But who am I to judge? Well, you're nobody, Francis, because apparently, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> you know, if you watch enough of my videos, you know that I, I, I have a certainty, not 100%, but like 99.8% that Benedict never resigned the office because he himself said that his renunciation does not revoke his acceptance of the office in 2005. This is his last audience. And it was, he was renouncing the only the active exercise of the ministry, but not the ministry. And Gonswine said, we have now an expanded office with an active and a, and a passive member. We have two successors of St. Peter. All right, so watch other videos. I'm not going to deal with it right now. So you can watch even the previous video. I dealt with it a bit. So yeah, who am I to judge? I'm only Francis. I don't know. I'm not going to judge them. I'm not going to tell them what's right and wrong. I'm nobody. Um... And of course, we cannot re uh, forget of, you know, the, um, the gay magazine names Pope Francis in 2013, December 17th, person of the year. 
Person of the Year, The Advocate magazine names Person of the Year, Pope Francis. If someone is gay and seeks the Lord with goodwill, how can, who am I to judge? Well, if, if you have really goodwill, you seek to be, to repent of your sin, right? And stop sinning, going and sinning no more. That would be true goodwill. So he's named as the person of the year by the Advocate magazine. And of course, we can't recall, you know, all these, uh, can't forget, um, which gives us the idea is like, okay, well, now what? Like, what's what's the deal? Like, now what? Uh, well, do you recall that even Newsmake magazine recognizing, recognizing that uh, Francis was causing a, let's go full screen here so you guys can see it here. Oh, it's not much bigger, but anyways. He says, uh, the Newsweek magazine in 2015 is the Pope Catholic. It used to be a joke. Now it's apparently a question on some people's minds. In 2015, so from day one, from 2013 onwards, it's been going on and on and on. And of course, the writer of the article, he says, of course he is. You just wouldn't know it from his press clips. Well, <laughs> if I wouldn't know it from his press, press clips, press clips, uh, and from his speeches and from his presentations, uh, well, how can he be Catholic? Now, which shows you that even the, the secular magazine had, it's like, it was even in 2015, 15, people are going like, what the hell is going on here? What is going on here? Anyways, and of course, um, oh yeah, we saw that one already about, Oh, and uh, before we do this, let's actually, um, I don't know if I should even bother showing you this or not. It is kind of naughty, not, um, I don't know, uh, 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 abuse, well, let's, no, let's be politically correct. Let's be open to the love of God. Let's be open to the, to this, let's listen to the spirit, which apparently the spirit contradicts himself uh, you know which spirit are we talking about? anyway it doesn't but let's recall i mean again as i said this document didn't come out of nowhere you've seen the succession now there is of course and it happened from 20 i don't remember 2014 2015 pope francis washes the feet of non-catholics non-christians and all kinds of things and even those who had uh physical alterations from one sex to another. Uh, he kisses their feet. And recently, recently, let me see. I mean, I, I hope you can, if you didn't have too much food right now uh, or drink too much, because it's a sight. It's a sight. And um, that's here we go. All right. Let's see. Oh, can we see it? Oh, let's share it. Actually, let's share it full screen. Full screen. So you can see it with the full. And it's all its grandeur. Here we go. Let's go with the audio. Ooh, transgender women, women go to lunch with Pope Francis. Wow. Wow. Beautiful. Look at these beautiful women. And the priest, you know, he's surrounded with all these transgender women going to have lunch with the Pope. Wow, it's so fun. We have such a lovely, lovely, lovely Pope who loves all his women's. The women's, the women's. Oh, look at that. Oh, beautiful for us. Mm. And I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think these were actually, as they call, say, sex workers. Um, reasonably certain about that. Oh, put your makeup on, put your makeup on. You gotta, gotta look beautiful. You gotta look pretty for, for the successor of Peter. Mm -mm. Are you guys looking pretty? All right. Good, beautiful women's. All right, now I think, I think that's enough of that. Should I just turn it off? I think that's, I think that's, well, maybe we can skip it a bit for Francis there. I think that's enough. You can always, that's from AP, the Associated Press. The Associated Press, not me. I'm not bringing it up. I didn't make it up. But on a more doctrinal matter, 
on a more doctrinal, again, this thing didn't come out of nowhere. Again, just recently, when was that? That was, a, what was it, like a few months ago? November, November 9th. November 9th. We have the Vatican declaring that transgender people can be baptized and become God parents. A document approved by Pope Francis lays out nuanced guidance in keeping with his vision of a more inclusive church. But it does not amount to a policy change in the church, the Vatican says. <laughs> so they, 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 so here it is. It's from the New York Times. New York Times. Vatican says transgender people can be baptized and become godparents. Of course, nothing changed. Nothing changed. We're not changing anything. But we're changing everything. <laughs> so, this, so I, as I said, this document didn't come out of nowhere. It didn't come out of nowhere. All right, you know what? I'm gonna just quickie bam, 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 and we're ended up here. We're... So, of course, if you've been watching uh, YouTube, some YouTubers, YouTubers, Catholic YouTubers, who can broadcast every day and every twice a day, which I don't have time for that. If I wish I could, but I can't. Um, and we don't want to have a repetition of everything. So I'm gonna just do hit it, and you can go watch. Uh, Taylor Marshall, Gordon, what is his name? Something Gordon, and uh, and uh, others. Uh, just uh, yesterday, yesterday, Tucho Fernandez, Tucho Fernandez's book came out. Well, it was about <laughs> La Passion Mystica. Espirulidad is sensualidad, spirituality and sexuality. Uh, sensuality, yes. spirituality and sensuality. Victor Manuel Hernandez. And you can read all about every human sexual act and the feeling of the sexual act. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm not going to go over it. And even Michael Haynes has now chapter six fully translated. So the article in on Rorati has chapter chapter seven, eight, and nine. Now we have chapter six. He can he can enjoy, I guess, what do you call it? Um, what can we call it? We can maybe call it um, Catholic uh, um, from uh, a doctrinally approved uh, Catholic uh, um, soft core. Is it even soft core pornography? I'm not sure. I think it's probably way more than that because it'll play your, your mind. I mean, how much uh, did, did the, a priest writing this must have been dwelt, dwelling on the subject, researching the subject to write these books? Uh, I'm not going to guess. I don't know. But uh, you might guess. And... Um, and I was going to talk a bit about, well, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to just mention this because over, over, I think Christmas, yeah, his Christmas sermon, you've probably seen it, an Italian priest basically went up into his final, he knew it was going to be his final church, his sermon in the church. He went up and said, declared basically Pope Francis a usurper because he said, Benedict never, never gave up the keys. Yeah, he left the, the palace, but he never gave up the peace. The keys meaning he did believe Benedict to be the Pope till his death. I'm just going to show you a couple of clips and, and I'm going to end it here. So again, National Catholic Reporter, Italian priest excommunicated, late sententia, meaning um, um, by the law itself. So there are, of course, if the priest can always um, canonically say, well, you know, I had true... True belief of what I said, so the excommunication communication doesn't hold. Uh, for slandering Pope Francis during Mass. Uh, <laughs> I think Francis slanders himself constantly. <laughs> uh, and um, so these are actually two priests. Well, he's, I mean, uh, they <laughs> are now, this is the one on the right, is the one who just said the sermon. And this other priest was, again, uh, basically declared 
Francis Knott Pope a while back. Um, so, uh, and it is not insane. It is not. It is not um, um, out of the realm of possibility. Actually, it is <laughs> very logical if you examine the actual texts of Benedict's so-called renunciation and the uh, um, um, you know the uh, explanations given by Gonswine and even Benedict XVI. I've got a whole bunch of videos on the subject, so it is not a. a and of course, you can look at the actions of Francis, the actions of Jorge. There's one again. I probably it's in one of my many videos. I remember. I think it was Cardinal Mueller talks about the two popes, and he condemns the theory of two popes. I can't remember the na official name of the video video I have at the moment, but. I, th I believe it was in that video because he mentions that the Holy Spirit is always given to the Pope a special assistance, a special charism for a validly elected Pope. So he will hold on to the faith. But when you see Francis from 2013 not holding to the faith and actually going against everything Catholic, everything traditional, he starts off by destroying the Franciscan Friars of the Immaculate from a super expanding congregation not the friars and now he, he went after the nuns too um supported by benedict 16th and, and approved for, and so and he goes after every tradition and every apostolic visitation is usually to good bishops traditional bishops you know we send them an apostolic visitation and kick them out um and i have a video on uh, when we were talking about the uh, bishop of tyler texas and he wasn't the first one he was a, in, in the last in a long series of bishops being good bishops being removed by Francis because they are Catholic bishops. So, and that's from the beginning, from the beginning. It's like, well, if the Holy Spirit's given special assistance to the to the successor of Peter, it's like it seems to he seems to be missing. The assistance of the Holy Spirit seems to be missing with Francis. But there seems to be a spirit which he seems to listen to a lot. But anyways, I think that's all there is to that. And um, Katie here has something to say. I believe everything Our Lady said at Quito, Fatima, La Salette, at Quito, and I believe, really believe the deathbed prophecy of St. Francis of Assisi is true and was suppressed. Actually, yeah, they should talk about the uh, Francis of Assisi. I think it's on, again, I quoted it in one of my previous videos. It is in a book published, I believe, in the 1800s, referring to it, and it talks about a non-canonically elected pope uh, who will be a destroyer. Um, but, I mean, we don't need a prophecy for that. And ima imagine it was Francine Francis talking about a non-canonically non elected pope. Uh, and the Francis takes, <laughs> Jorge takes the name of Francis. Um uh, all right, so, and of course, she sent me a nice thank you. God bless you and your work. Gotta go. Thank you. Have a good day. I gotta go too. We all gotta go. So, um, anyways, that was that. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and share. And since it's now 2024, I will attempt as much as possible to be in more consistent uh, videos, maybe twice a week or something. And uh, maybe I'll see you tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. All right, that's it. That's all. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.